Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a bit of a video on a new filter that I got from SV Boney. Now I've been doing mono imaging for a while and initially I really enjoyed it but as a lot of people have said, you know, in these UK skies I just don't seem to get the time to ever finish a complete project. Um, so what I thought I'd do is for the summer at least I'm going to change back over to my one shot colour camera. Um, and so with this in mind I thought I really needed to get myself a dual narrowband filter. Now about two years ago I used to own an Alextreme, Optilong Alextreme and stupidly I sold it uh, which is typical. Uh, now I, you know I sort of want it back. So I looked around thought about getting another Alextreme and then I saw one from SV Boney. This guy here. It's the SV220, this is the 2 inch version. I reached out to SV Boney and said I was interested in buying one and they very kindly said well we'll send you one, do a review on it and if you want it absolutely fine. Um, so I've had this for, for a while now, probably about 6 weeks. Uh, I've only just got around to doing the view, review for various reasons. So uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the filter itself. It comes just in this cardboard box. It came in a jiffy envelope, um, printed cardboard box, and as many filters do nowadays, inside a plastic box and a transmission graph, which just shows you the transmission graphs for both the Oxygen 3 and the Hydrogen Alpha. Um, I think it's 95 percent hydrogen alpha and just over 90 percent in oxygen 3. Now on paper this filter is pretty much identical in every way to the Optilongel Extreme. Uh, for all I know and I don't know they could even the glass could even be made in the same factory. Now it's possible. Um, the, the specs are pretty much identical. This is a two inch version as I say. The only spec that is slightly different is that the Optilong L Extreme is 1.85 millimeters thick and this on the spec is 1.8 millimeters thick. So 0.5 millimeters difference. Other than that, they're both seven nanometer bandpass for both oxygen three and hydrogen alpha. So for all intents and purposes, they look exactly the same on paper. So I thought, I'd give it a try. Now at the moment this is available for $127 I believe at the moment uh, which is good and I think for UK buyers it's actually available on Amazon as well for around about £145. So quite a bit cheaper than the Alextreme certainly for uh, USA buyers anyway and, and obviously buyers in China from places like AliExpress and that it's a very good buy. So what I've done is I've taken some images with this just to check uh, mainly for halos because as we all know halos is the biggest bugbearer bearer with, with filters and especially with maybe the less expensive filters. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get to the computer uh, we're going to have a look for some images that I've taken uh, in Pix and Sight and just check for the halos um, and see what you all think. Now I think personally this may be one of the best budget dual narrowband filters around. If you guys have seen one better after you've watched the whole of this video, then please leave it, leave a, a comment and uh, I'd love to hear from you. But uh, I'd certainly thought for the price that I was going to give it a go uh, and see how it performs. Like I say, I did own an, an Optilong L Extreme, so I've got some old data to check it against. So uh, I'll do that. So let's get to the computer and see how it performs. Okay, so we're on the computer now and the first thing I just want to show you is the two transmission graphs for these two filters. On the left here, you'll see the Optilong L Extreme and on the right, it's the SV Boney 220. Now, if we look at the Oxygen 3 on the transmission graph here for the L Extreme, you can see it's sitting at around 93 there, whereas the Oxygen 3 on the SV Boney is just touching 90 so there's a very slight difference there. If we look at the HA it's just under 95 say 94 which is pretty much exactly the same as what it states for the SV Boney just under 95 on there so very very similar 
Um, I just want to look at a couple of images now. So I've got two images here, both taken of the rosette, but they were about 12 months apart. I've, they've been cropped and rescaled uh, to look exactly the same. Um, and I hope this is going to come across okay on the video. I'm not that brilliant with pics in sight, so bear with me. These have had just an FTS stretch, um, very, very minimal processing, both done exactly the same. And as you can probably see, they look pretty much identical on the screen here. Now, I've had to use the Rosette Nebula for the simple reason is it's the only other data I'd got from the L-Extreme to compare. So the one on the left is the L-Extreme and the one on the right is the SV Boney 220. And the first thing I notice, and I'm not sure again whether this is coming across, is that there's more Oxygen 3 coming through on the SV Boney. Now these are both around two hours of two minute subs. Uh, on the L Extreme, it's a little bit redder and less, which is a complete opposite to what the transmission graphs show. So it does make you wonder really how accurate those transmission graphs are. But the main thing is the stars. The stars on both these images, they're both pretty much identical. There are no halos to speak of on either of the images, even when zoomed right in none at all that i can see and certainly no difference between the two that i can see it's um actually quite canny here how how equal they are if anything i would say there's just a slight more color in the l extreme as you can see this star here has got a bit of a more of a red around it than maybe this one so there's probably a little bit more color in them but other than that as regards halos i really can't see any difference between them at all and i was expecting a difference especially with the price point of the filters i mean these are zoomed in at four to one so they're zoomed in quite a long way but again there's more h alpha in this l extreme than there is on the sv bernie but halos on stars they're pretty much identical. I cannot see any difference between them, and I hope you can see the same. Uh, I hope it's coming across with the compression of YouTube. But to my eyes, there is no difference at all. Uh, I haven't got any images of stars like On Attack or anything like that, but I think, with my experience, any uh, filter is going to give you halos on stars like that. I'm afraid these are the only images I've got. They haven't got too many bright stars in them, uh, which is a shame, but it is just to give you an idea. Uh, and my personal opinion is that there is absolutely no real difference, no noticeable difference at all uh, in this between these two filters when looking at the same area of sky um like i say i'm not brilliant with pics in sight and just apart from the extra h alpha on there there is no difference as regards stars and only a very basic test i'm afraid because i haven't got a lot of data from the l extreme but i hope that gives you an idea and i hope you agree that as regards um halos there is no difference between these two filters in my opinion So I just wanted to show you a close-up of the filter. Not an awful lot to see really, but I just thought it was good to show you. Again, very similar to the LX Stream, the markings, silver band around the top. Obviously the print is different, but it does look very, very similar. Um, and as you'll see in the rest of the video, it performs very similar as well. And that's the... Uh, transmission graph not sure how well you can see that that comes with the filter so as you can see there from uh, having a look on the computer very very minimal difference if any difference at all from the Optilon Gale Extreme personally I really couldn't see any difference I think it's an absolutely excellent filter obviously with all filters it all you know the the tests I've done only relate to the actual 
filter that I have got. Obviously they can vary from batch to batch. We've, we've all seen this on the internet. One person can have a good one, another one can have a not so good one. This obviously review is on the filter and the actual one that I have got compared to the L-Extreme that I had previously. So uh, all I can say about this one is, it's, it's in my opinion, th there's no difference uh, at all. It, it's worth, definitely worth uh, the money and, and worth a punt in, in my opinion. So uh, I hope I've answered the question to whether this is the best budget dual narrowband filter. Uh, any comments, like I say, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. I do try and answer all the comments. Uh, so until the next video, clear skies.